name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and up into the age of our Today is the first Sunday of the blessed month of Abib. And uh, just kind of to remind ourselves of the different major events that we have happened so far in the last few months in the calendar of the church, right? So we, we had the Great Lent followed by the Holy Passion Week, right? And then the Feast of the Resurrection, right? For how many days? It's easy. How, how long did we not fast for? <laughs> 50 days, right? <laughs> And then after that is the Feast of Apostles' Feast is not here yet. It's Tuesday. What happens on the 50th day after resurrection? Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. Okay, good. <laughs> right, so um, why am I asking this? Because the, the, these major events that happened over 2,000 years ago is still very powerful and important in our life. And not only that, but the events and the power and the blessings of those major events, we should also experience as Christians on a daily or maybe weekly basis. Of course, annually, we celebrate in the church. But <clears throat> I'll get to more about that in, in a minute. minute. But uh, so... What were the themes? Let's skip a great Lent. Um, but what's the theme of Passion Week? Love. And what's the major event? The cross, <laughs> right? The suffering of the Lord and his death. And then what's the major theme of resurrection? Light. <laughs> life right the power of the resurrection um right and then so the theme of the holy 50 days is the resurrection what's the theme of the fast that we just or the month that we just finished we told you for four weeks <laughs> what so what happened on the 50th day the holy spirit came right so the month right after the theme is the holy spirit and then what feast are we celebrating in two days? Apostles. Right? So what do you think the feast, the theme of this month is? The apostles. <laughs> right? And the work of the apostles. And after the Holy Spirit comes, he gives power to the church and the servants of God. Um, sorry. I, I just want to, to help set up the, the second part of what I said is, okay, so if that's what happened then, and the church keeps emphasizing it, then how does that apply in my relationship with God, <clears throat> right? Um, <clears throat> so today, we read the same gospel um, and the same events pretty much as when we celebrate a feast of one of the apostles during the year, uh, during the week, right? And so because the feast doesn't, usually doesn't fall on Sunday, then the church put the same readings pretty much, to, to be read on Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> and so um, also, as you know, just heard, we, we celebrated um, the commemoration of St. Cyril, the Pillar of the Faith. we we'll try to kind of um, tie all of those events together. So the gospel is about the Lord sending out the apostles. He did this more than once, right? <clears throat> and um, he did this once before the resurrection and once after um, uh, after the resurrection before before the, the Pentecost uh, and oh, sorry uh, he sent he sent them out um, and on the ascension he described what they should do um, to wait to Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit and then to go out and to preach to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Son and the Holy Spirit. Actually, that was the end of the Gospel of Matins today. Um, <clears throat> so here the Lord says that he sends them out as lambs among wolves, right? And what to carry, what not to carry, what to say, what not to say, what to eat, what not to eat. Um, 
uh, what to rejoice in, what not to rejoice in. So he, he's giving them uh, the great commission, as you say, um, sending out the apostles and, and what the apostle should be like. Of course, should be like Christ. Um, and when we read the book of Acts, it's amazing. Right? We see the work of God very powerful in the disciples and the apostles of Christ. <clears throat> but for me, and for you, uh, how does this apply? Right? We attended the Passion. Or we fasted with the Lord. We witnessed his resurrection and the joy and the power and the light and the life that comes from it. And we received the Holy Spirit on the day of our baptism, but also um, in in our daily life, he works inside of us. <clears throat> but sometimes we focus, I think, too much on the acts um, instead of the power that comes from it, right? So for me, we should be like a mini apostle, right? Um, and every day is a mini commission. The Lord is sending me out into the world um, to do his work. Right? And the Lord tells me what I should do, what I shouldn't do, what I should say, what I shouldn't say, um, what I should eat, what I shouldn't eat. Right? Um, and, and sometimes, even when we look at the saints, we focus on the works and the miracles. And of course, that's, that helps um, bolster our faith and helps give us a relationship with those saints. But the question is, do I focus on the miracle or the miracle worker or the miracle maker? Right? Do I focus on the waiter or the food or the master chef? Do I focus on the race car or the driver of the race car? Do I focus on the servant or do I focus on the master? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes in our life, we focus on the works, but not the, the word or the power that comes from the works. Um, and uh, so the question is, what, did the, what made the apostles so great? And powerful um we know right is the power of god in them but how did they get that power yes when the holy spirit came but was that the only thing they needed like i remember when in the the book of acts chapter one when um the 11 are gathered and they're waiting for the coming of the holy spirit um they said, wait, there's something wrong. What was wrong? They needed 12. We need, we need someone else to, to take his place, as the scriptures say. So they began to think, okay, who, who's qualified? What type of resume should, should we have for, um, for this 12th apostle? Does anyone remember what were some of the... It was only a couple of lines that, that is mentioned in scripture. What do they need? Hmm? Yes. So one of the main. Oh, so they said. Uh, but they they said, first of all, um, it has to be someone among us who the Lord came in and out with, um, from the time of his baptism until the time of his taking up the ascension. It had to be someone who witnessed these events. Um, why? Because that's where the power came from. The power didn't just come from the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost, but it was their whole life with him for the years before. Um, he was shaping and modeling them and preparing them um, for this work. Um, and so simply being with Christ, being with the Lord, little by little, we, we become transformed. We're conforming to him and not to the world. Um, and... Uh, so when I am, if you can use this term, the mini apostle, right? Um, I have to be with him more in order to have this power. Um, and the power comes from God, not from me. But I interact with him. Um, and so another story in the gospel, according to St. John, the very first chapter, when the Lord called his, his disciples, um, who was the first called? Anyone know? St. Saint, Saint Andrew, right? Um, the, the brother of St. Peter. 
Um, and so most, we're not sure exactly who the second one was, but in the Gospel according to St. John, because he's writing it, maybe it was St. John, but there were four, um, uh, four of the disciples were brothers and fishermen and most likely disciples of John the Baptist, right? Um, John, James, Peter, and Andrew. Um, so anyways, two of them, um, it's in John 1, chapter 37, it says the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. So the Lord began to speak. This was in the very beginning. Um, and then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said, what do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, uh, where are you staying? We want to stay with you. We want to be with you. Right? So this is the, uh, this is before he calls them, they have this desire and this inclination to be with Christ. Um, and he said to them, come and see. And then interesting, this is in verse 39, it says, they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him. So that's what we have to do. We have to come and desire and follow after the Lord and remain with him. Not just on Sunday morning, not just on the feasts, but our goal is to, for it to happen every day. And so I have to follow behind the Lord. And he, when he asks, what do you want? I say, I, I just want to be with you. I want to stay with you. My problem is sometimes we come to the Lord, but say, oh, that's, I have to leave as soon as possible. Um, when is this prayer going to end? When, um, what's the minimum that I need to be okay and to get what I want? Um, but, but don't ask too much of me. No, we have to kind of do the opposite. Um, we, we need to nag after the Lord um, <clears throat> to want to be with him more and more. Um, okay, another example, hopefully it, 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 uh, it makes sense, but think of your week or at least the Sunday liturgy as the power, right? As the gospels. So like, like I was saying, sometimes we say, okay, let's skip from the old Testament, go straight to the, to the power in the book of Acts. Well, how did that power, where did they get it from? Is from Christ and the gospel, right? Um, that is kind of like, as some fathers say, that, you know, the crown of the scriptures is the gospel because that's where we see and hear and taste Christ. Uh, so in our life, the liturgy should be that because that's where we see and hear and taste of Christ and, and are as close to him as possible on this world because we take him inside of us. Uh, and so... What comes before the Gospels in Scripture? Easy question. <laughs> What's before the Gospel of St. Matthew in your Bible? The Old Testament, <laughs> right? So before Sunday comes, you know, the, the, the week before. Um, so maybe in my liturgy of sorts or in my Gospel of my life, right? Sunday or liturgy, is the gospel for me. But before, I need to, to learn. I need to hear about him. I need to understand the history. I need to wait, like uh, hear about the prophecies about him and, and have this desire to be with him, right? <clears throat> and then after comes comes the apostleship. After comes the Lord sends us out and say, okay, do, and do likewise, as you have seen, as you have followed, as you, as you have witnessed, and as I have given you power, go do. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, this is what we call, in a sense, the liturgy after liturgy, right? So before the liturgy is all the preparation, is my Old Testament. Um, and then the liturgy is my worship in spirit and truth, as St. Cyril wrote a whole book about just that one, titled with that one verse, what is the proper worship um, in, in spirit? And after that, after the proper, true, powerful worship comes the life. Um, and actually, even in the Greek, the, the word is the same. Um, a service is the same word almost as, as worship. It's in, it, when it's translated, some, they use those words inter interchangeably. Because how I worship is how I live. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, just, just to kind of wrap everything up, right? So I need the preparation before I meet Christ, which is 
not only vespers and and um, and the prayers that come before, but the the repentance and the and the anxious uh, desire to be with Him. Right. This is this what should preoccupy my my thoughts and my actions, especially right before I I come to church and and, and attend the divine liturgy. And after there should be a, a period of time as well, in in which you know I. I re-interact with the power that I've just been given um, so that there is a change, there is a transformation. Um, and so uh, just kind of to tie that in with um, one of St. Cyril's most famous uh, phrases where he talks about, as, as we read before, the unity of God and man. Where is the perfect unity of God and man found? Besides the church. Communion? Something more specific. For us, yes. But before that. The Lord Jesus Christ, right? He, he is the factory <laughs> uh, of sorts in, in which we see the, the perfect unity of God and man. And, and only in him could this have been materialized and realized and perfected. Um, and that's the only way we can get communion, right, is, is through his incarnation. And so that's why St. Cyril fought so strongly and hardly um, against the, the heresy that denied not only the term Theotokos, but the, the, con the concept of God being this close with man and taking humanity to himself. Um, and without, without change, without alteration, but forever. So, and I've said this before, but like when we, when we um, rejoice in the Feast of Ascension, why is it so joyful? Because I'm with him. He, he, uni he united to all humanity in the incarnation. And what he did, did in the flesh, um, he also did for me and with me. And so... Um, uh, this mystery of how God became man is important for us uh, and important for us to request the same power to happen with man and God. Um, of course, not to the same extent, like the, the, the union of humanity and divinity that happened in the person of Christ cannot be um, uh, cannot be copied and imitated, but it, we can receive the blessing from it. Um, so the liturgy becomes where this happens, right? Where, where we become one with God. Um, and this is the transformation that we need on a daily level. And only then, and then can we, can we have the authority and the power um, as the apostles to announce the, that the kingdom of God is near to others, to pray for the sick, to go out as lambs among wolves. By the way, St. Cyril uh, says about this, and I'll conclude with this. He says, you know, how can um, the lambs go out among wolves? He said, how can one so peaceful conquer the savageness of beasts of prey? He, yes, he says, for they all have me as their shepherd. Small and great people and princes, teachers and students, I will be with you, help you and deliver you from all evil. So God is not only telling the apostles that, he's telling us Right? I'll be with you. Don't worry. I, I want you to stay as a, sh a lamb. I don't want you to be changed into a wolf like everyone else. Um, <clears throat> I will tame the savage beasts, and I will change them into sheep. Um, so when we're out in the world, we don't have to uh, be pressured to be wolves like everyone else. But God wants to use us to change them to be like lambs. He says, I will change the wolves into sheep, and I will make... The persecutors become the helpers of the persecutor. That's what he did with St. Paul, right? He said, I will make those who wrong my ministers to be sharers in their pious designs. I will make and unmake all things, and nothing has mercy spiral. May the grace of God be with us to give us the power and work of the holy apostles in our life, that we may see him and be with him and be used by him. And glory be to him now and for the age of Blessed are they.